Hi, my name is Daniel, and I'm here to teach you guys about basic aerodynamics. Um, how do airplanes work? There are four forces involved in making an airplane fly. Thrust, lift, drag, and weight. Thrust counteracts drag, and thrust is produced by the engines. Drag is air resistance, and drag is produced by almost all the surfaces on an aircraft. Weight is just gravity, and lift is produced by the wings, and it counteracts the gravity, or weight. Lift is produced by the wings, and it counteracts weight. Lift, like I just said, is produced by the wings. There are two principles or laws that make the wing work. First law, or first principle, is Berluni's principle. Daniel Berluni was a scientist uh, he was born February 1700. He was a medical, he actually studied the field of medicine. And he accidentally found out that the faster fluid flows, the lower pressure it has. Um, by curving the top of the wing, or airfoil, and making the bottom of the wing flatter than the top, a uh, lift can be created. Since an air molecule in the front of the wing has to travel to the back of the wing at the same time as our air molecules on the bottom of the wing, but the top of the wing is curved, so it has to go a longer distance in the same amount of time, so it must go faster. And like Daniel Berluni said, the faster air molecules go, the less pressure they have. So low pressure over here, high pressure over here. Maybe you already know that wind flows from high pressure to low pressure, and therefore there will be a lifting action pushing the wing up. The second law that keeps a plane flying is called Newton's Third Law. Newton's Third Law was developed by Isaac Newton, who was born on January 1643, and he says every action has an opposite reaction. Like, um, if you push against a desk, you'll not only be pushing the desk forward, but you'll also be pushing yourself back a little. So the airflow hitting the wing, uh, while the wing is at an angle, will deflect the air down. While deflecting the air down, the wing will also force itself up. And that is Newton's third law. Thrust. Thrust is produced by the engines. There are three main types of engines. Um, there's a propeller, which is also known as an air screw. It's basically a backwards fan that's put on a combustion engine, which runs on pistons like a car engine. It's normally used on slower aircraft, but it can sometimes be seen on faster aircraft too. Um, there's also something called a turboprop, which I'll go over later. Uh, jet engines are used on lots of combat aircraft and airplanes that need to go faster than the speed of sound usually. Jet engines compress air that enters the front, mixes it with fuel, and burns it and forces, that, forces the burning air through the back. This extreme, out, this extreme displacement of air uh, uses Newton's third law. Since it's pushing air back, it's also pushing the engine forward. So that produces thrust. It's not the most efficient engine, but it can be used to go very, very fast. Turbofans have, uh, they're basically a mixture between a propeller and a uh, jet engine. There's, uh, really, there's large sets of fan blades in the front which not only deliver air to the compressor, but also something called bypass air. I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, air is drawn in through the front, compressed, mixed with fuel, and shot out the back. When it's being shot out the back over here, it spins, it turns these two, these set of turbines, which then in turn revolve these main fan blades. These fan blades, as you can see, also force air, cold air, through something called a 
bypass meter. Bypass air never enters the actual engine, and this type of engine is much more efficient. There's a third type, there's a fourth type, which um, I haven't really talked about, but it's a turboprop. It's basically a jet engine, except it's a turbofan engine, except um, it doesn't have these two surrounding things. So it's like a jet engine with a huge propeller in the front. And here are some pictures of aircraft. This is an aircraft that uses a propeller engine. This is the propeller. The combustion or piston engine is inside the neck. This is an F-22 Raptor that uses jet engines. As you can see, it's burning a lot of fuel, but it can also go very, very, very fast. Too. I, think, I believe the, the F-22 Raptor is a class Mach 2 aircraft, so it can go twice the speed of sound. And this is um, about bypass air, passes through the engine without being burned. And this is an engine that has lots of bypass air. It's called the bypass ratio. It's the ratio of air that passes through the engine and the ratio of air that doesn't pass through the engine. This is a 777X. Very, very fuel efficient. All right, third force, drag. There's Drag is the air resistance. Um, once you move forward, there's going to be air pushing on you. That's drag. But that's just... Uh, that type of drag is usually associated with parasite drag. Parasite drag says the faster you go, more air resistance. You stick your hand out of a car, the faster you go, there's going to be more wind pushing in your hand. So you go, less wind on your hand. And the um, second type of drag is induced drag. It's a bit more hard to understand. These three airfoils or wings are all going at the same altitude. Uh, they're not going down or not going up. So this one, it's going pretty, this wing is going through the air pretty fast. There's only this much uh, air resistance, surface area that's being pushed against the wind. Uh, this wing is actually going slower than this one, but quite not as slow as this one. Uh, this wing is not going up or not going down, just like this one. But it's going slower, so it has to deflect more air down. But if it has to deflect more air down, it needs a greater angle, 15 degrees, and that, therefore it has a greater surface area. This wing is almost stalling, or it's going so slow that it can't really fly anymore. And it has 25 degrees. That's like a lot, a lot of drag. So, um, slower you go, more drag, and then. Parasite drag is faster you go, more drag. Uh, parasite drag, this is airspeed. But then induced drag. And, but then there's a point where it's called point of minimum drag. Minimum drag. Uh, the pilot tries to find this point if there's an engine failure. So they can fly to the further dis farthest distance. Although sometimes that's pretty hard when you don't have engine working. Uh, last force, weight. It's pretty simple. Uh, gravity, um, weight is counteracted by lift. If you have more lift than gravity, you're going up. If you have more gravity than lift, you start descending or going down. That's it for chapter one, and here's chapter two. Chapter two, control surfaces. In this chapter, I will explain to you how a plane is maneuvered or moved throughout the air. first type of control surface is a rudder. Rudder is usually located on the vertical stabilizer or the tail fin of, um, of an aircraft. And it's the same rudder as it's used on a boat or vessels or ships or whatever you want to call them. Here's a picture of a rudder. This thing that's deflected is a th rudder itself. And then this tail fin thing is called the vertical stabilizer. And it holds the rudder while also, like the fins of an arrow, make the plane fly straight and make it stable. Is, that's what we call it. Next type of control surface is elevators. Elevators are located on the horizontal stabilizer. 
which is the slightly darker um, shape. It also acts like a fin, um, like the fins on an arrow to make it fly straight and fly stably. But it also holds an elevator. An elevator is basically a sideways rudder that controls pitch or the nose up and down movement of an aircraft. These diagrams over here show you a stable aircraft, mutually stable aircraft, and an unstable aircraft. If you have larger fins or if you have heavier nose weight, then it will be more stable. If you don't, then it will be unstable. Aerolions. Aerolions are um, control surfaces located on each wing. Normally, aircraft have one, but larger aircraft, such as this one shown here, have two sets of airlines. They work opposite to each other. If you want to turn right, then the right airline goes up, pushing the right wing down, and then the left airline goes down, pushing the left wing up. So it goes in this direction. Uh, it controls roll, or the banking of the aircraft. Flaps, it's not a main control surface and not all aircraft have it, but flaps are used to increase lift and also to increase drag. Flaps uh, change the shape of the wing by increasing the camber or the curvature of the wing. It's used during takeoff and landing and also climbing and, uh, uh, um, climbing and approaching. Uh, it's used so you can have steeper approaches and it works by uh, allowing the pilot to fly slower than normal by increasing more lift. And here is three flaps extended at different levels. This is flaps up or flap zero. It's for climbing, cruising, and descending. This is flaps lower, lower the notch. It's used for takeoff and climb. And this is a slap by the way. Something that I might talk about in the later lecture. And this is flaps, fully deflected, produces a ton of lift uh, around final approach to landing. Uh, at this point, the aircraft can go much slower than if the flaps are over here. Lastly, there's boilers. Um, I don't know if you can call this a control surface, but many, almost all large aircraft have Spoilers. Spoilers are also known as air brakes or speed brakes. They um, they are used to increase drag and sometimes decrease lift if they are air brakes. Spoilers are usually describing control surfaces that increase drag while um, air brakes, speed brakes. Uh, dump lift. Spoilers are used on steep descents and uh, to help the plane stop. During steep descents, spoilers are extended around one half, so speed can be reduced really quickly, or drag can be increased so you can go down without speeding up. And uh, the spoilers over here are shown are increasing drag a lot and. They're helping to stop the plane along with the wheel brakes and reversers. And thank you for listening to my lecture. Hope you subscribe and you'll see me in the future.